My name is Sarah Bowen. I am a polymer clay artist in Tulsa working under the name Tiny Things by Bowen. And I'm really excited that you are here today for the tiny terraforming class. We are going to be taking clay, whether that is polymer, air dry, or modeling clay, whatever you're working with, and turning it into a tiny alien world inside of a little Altoids tin. So the materials that you'll be needing today are the Altoids tin or something similar. There are other things that come in little tins like this. You can also use a little cardboard box. The process is going to look a little bit different, but I'll walk you through that if that's what you have. We'll be needing whatever kind of clay you're going to use. Um, for me, I'm using polymer. That is my favorite medium. Um, it oven bakes and is really sturdy afterwards. So it'll be a really long lasting project. My favorite brand is Fimo, but there's also Sculpey and other off brands. You can get those at Michaels or even uh, Walmart. The other things that you'll be needing are some kind of tool around your house that has a little rounded end. So for me, I grabbed this little paintbrush that has an end. Um, sometimes pins that have clickers have an end shape like this. Whatever it is, it'll work. You're also going to need some kind of dark permanent marker. So that could be a Sharpie or like a thicker one, whatever works for you. Other optional tools you don't have to have, but you could use if you choose to. Um, a toothbrush is a really great, easy household item that can add a lot of texture and interest to your clay. And if you have been playing with clay and you have some clay tools, you're welcome to use any and all of them, but the ballpoint tools that have these little metal balls on the end could be really good for this project. And then depending on your materials, if you're using air dry clay maybe, it's going to come out of this tin once it's dry because it doesn't really adhere to the metal. So you might want to use some super glue to glue it in place. Or if you're using polymer clay with a cardboard box, same thing. You'll want to glue them in after it is baked. Um, if you're using this combination, polymer clay and a tin box, it actually adheres really well all on its own and you can bake the box at the same time. Um, and if you would like to play around with paint, you're welcome to do that, especially if you have white polymer clay um, or white air dry or paper clay even. That's another one I didn't mention. You can use paper clay. Um, all of those take acrylic paint really nicely. So maybe you want to work all in white and then go back and paint it. You're welcome to do that. You're also welcome to use paint instead of Sharpie on the background for a little bit more of a professional look. Um, I wanted to show that it was really possible with Sharpie because most of us have one of those around the house somewhere. So collect your tool and we'll get started. All right, so now we've got this close-up camera. You can see a little bit more of the details, maybe the texture and the planet there, the shiny stars in the background of the box. Uh, I'm going to show you how to do this, these textures on this planet. Um, but I hope that you play around with it and kind of expand with your own ideas and make it even more unique. We're going to start out with the box. So make sure that you've gone in and cleaned out these little, you know, candy crumbs that happen. You can get a wet cloth. I actually did use a cloth and there's still a few left in mine. Um, but we want to get that out of there. The clay is going to have a better chance of sticking to the metal if it is nice and clean. So I'm happy with that. And we are going to start, I'll do mine this way. We're going to start by coloring in the stars. So if you would rather use acrylic paint, you are welcome to do that. Um, again, I wanted to kind of show how easy it was and accessible it was to do with a Sharpie. So I'm just gonna show you, and I'll make it like this one where I put one really shiny, maybe that's like a sun far away. Leave that one nice and big. Draw in all of our little star circles. If you're using a cardboard box, um, paint is probably going to be a little bit easier for you, uh, but you're welcome to go ahead and do this with Sharpie as well. On the cardboard box, <clears throat> we're going to want to pop the clay back out of it before we cook it, just because we don't want any mishaps with the cardboard in the oven. 
Um, whereas with this tin, we are actually going to just bake that right along with the clay, which is pretty awesome. So once I've got all my little star dots in there, I'm going to go in and color it in. I'm going to speed it up for you and see you when it is done. completed mine. My Sharpie of course chose today to decide to run out of ink so I ran and grabbed a little Prismacolor permanent marker that I had. Any permanent marker is going to work just fine and I went in and colored in those stars like so. It's almost hard to see because it's so shiny um, and then if you want to do the other side as well go for it and again if you would rather be painting this paint it but make sure you give it time to dry before you go and stick your clay in there. So we're going to let this sit over here and dry out and start working with our clay. So depending on what kind of clay you chose, they all kind of have different consistencies. So if you bought polymer clay recently, there's a good chance it's nice and soft because it is fresh, it's been made recently. Um, if you've had polymer clay sitting around your house, or maybe you bought it from a store that had it sitting on a shelf for a long time, you're going to find that it is pretty hard, almost crunchy. Um, you can still condition it. So to condition, we're wanting to make friction with our hands. So you're really rubbing your hands together and you're rolling that clay in your hands. Spend time with it. You're going to get really frustrated if you try to work with polymer clay before it is fully conditioned. You'll know that it's fully conditioned when you can pretty easily smush it between two fingers. Um, because mine is so fresh, like right off the factory floor, it's so soft, um, I'm hardly having to do any conditioning. But unless your clay is brand new, you're going to have to. So pause the video, spend some time getting it nice and smushy, and come back. If you are working with air dry clay, that is a very different consistency. That is almost like foamy feeling. Um, it's really soft. You're not going to want to condition it a ton um, because it just gets stickier as it gets warmer. So just go ahead and start with me in the process after I've gotten this conditioned. Um, so for those of you who are ready, your clay is nice and soft, you're ready to go. So what we're doing is we are flattening our two colors out into pretty thin sheets. Now when you start working with the clay, make sure you have enough to kind of fill up half of the Altoids tin, or maybe a little more, depending on how big you want your planet to be. It would be unfortunate to get really far and realize you don't have enough. Um, but if that happens to you, one tip or trick that I use is to just hide some, kind of flatten out what you do have, stuff a ball of some other color inside roll it up inside of it and that expands the size of your clay and you'll never see what's on the inside unless you forget and kind of like dig too deep in there. But if that happens to you, use that technique to be able to make your full-sized planet. And I think that I forgot to mention that your surface when working with clay should be hard and clean. So that could be just a wooden table, maybe a countertop. Those are totally fine. Clay cleans up really easily. Um, but don't try working on a surface like a fabric, any kind of fabric that's going to get fuzzies in your clay. It's going to stay in the fabric. It's just going to be all around unpleasant. So make sure you're working on some kind of hard work surface. I'm using a ceramic tile. If you get really into clay, ceramic tiles are really nice to have around and really cheap to buy at like Home Depot. All right, so we're ready to start making this ombre effect. We're going to have our dark blue slowly fade up into the light blue. And to do that, we take our two flattened sheets of clay. They're not perfect. They're not even, it doesn't matter. We're gonna take them and we're going to overlap them about that much so that we're having like slightly less than half of each chunk of clay is overlapped with the other color. So do that, kind of stretch it out 
Again, if it's not conditioned, it's probably not going to stretch very well. So get it soft and squishy. And then we're going to fold it in half like that and just smush it back out to that original larger shape that we had it at. And you'll notice it is starting to tint my hands and fingers. Any clay that has a lot of pigment, whether it's modeling clay, polymer clay, is likely going to do that. It's not dying it, it's not permanent. You can wash your hands in between, but you should know that if you say I'm using this and then I wanna add like a little white mountaintop or something on the top of my planet, you'll totally turn your white blue on accident. So when working with polymer clay, be ready to clean your hands in between colors so that that pigment doesn't mess up a lighter color. So I folded it once, I'm gonna keep going. And it's gonna take quite a while before we see the color actually get mixed. So have some patience. Polymer clay artists usually do this process with a um, pasta maker, basically, like a little spaghetti smusher that you roll it through and it flattens in and you fold it and you do that again and again and again. It's definitely faster, but I wanted to model to you that you don't really need any special tools to make this happen. You just need a little bit of patience. So keep flattening and stretching. Here you can start to see a little bit of that lighter color come through. You can definitely see it back here. They're starting to blend. If it starts to get too long, just spend a little time in your smushing process, smooshing it back down into a more manageable shape. Don't worry about messing it up. Just give it a try. So I'm three or four folds in now, and you can really start to see the colors combining. And if you chose two really different colors, that might look extra cool in the end if you get a good ombre effect or fade. So there it is again. You're really starting to be able to see it. If you're working with air dry, you're probably already done. Um, mixing. Know when to stop because if you continue and you're not careful about keeping your lines kind of straight, you're just going to end up with one in between color. So if you get a nice ombre effect and you like it, just stop and wait for me to catch up. Now that I'm at a point that I really like the fade on this, I think that it is subtle enough. Um, you know, if I were to keep going, it would be even more subtle and gradual, but I'm okay with how it is. So once you get to a point that you like the fade, start smushing it back up. Maybe do one last little fold and spend a little time getting it into like, a sphere, kind of. You don't need it to be fully 3D, but just kind of smoosh it back up and start to get that planet-y shape. If you have folds like this, you can spend a little bit of time kind of smoothing them out with your finger. If you're at home and the germs are safe, you can lick your finger and smooth it a little bit. That is going to help. You can also dip your finger in a bit of water. Don't go crazy. Don't add a lot of water to this clay because it will uh, weaken it. It won't be very strong once it is baked. So now I have this roughly planet shaped blob and I am ready to place it into my tent. So when we do that, we're going to want to flatten it out, get it about the right size. If you're working in a cardboard box, make sure that you're still able to get it back out later. For us working in tins, you can just go ahead and smush it right in there and work inside the box, which is pretty ideal because you're not risking misforming it, malforming it when you pull it out of the box. So I have flattened it to be about as thick as I want it to be, and I'm going to smush it in there like that. And from here, you can kind of play with the exact shape that you want. So I'm going to have mine 
just like on this one, I think it makes it a little more interesting to have it going up at an angle rather than just one little hump this way. It kind of makes it look like a larger planet, really, because you're only seeing a smaller section of its arc or its horizon. I'm not sure if you can see in the video or not, but I have fingerprints all over this. Don't be super concerned about getting your fingerprints out of there because we're going to add a lot of texture and it's going to look cool. And honestly, I don't worry about fingerprints in any of my stuff. And if you own any of my art that I've had in the past, if you go look at it, I bet you can find a fingerprint. I don't worry much about it. So I'm happy with how it's placed in there. I'm happy with its ombre. And we're gonna start texturing. So whatever tool you found, let me move this out of here. Whatever tool you found uh, to have a little blunt end like this, what we're gonna do is go in and add some like pock marks. Maybe asteroids have hit the planet. Maybe they have a bunch of little canyons made by water. Who knows what your alien planet has going on. But if you watch how I do that, I kind of, I start, I put one little dent in there like that, and then I softly and slowly go around in a circle with this tool, and it gives you a nice, smooth, circular pockmark like that. You can play with a lot of different sizes. Maybe you want to turn it on its edge right here and get like, one really big one right on the horizon. You can also use your fingers. I kind of use my finger to soften that out into more of a circle instead of that kind of line that we had by doing that motion like that. If you have clay tools and you want to play with those, this ballpoint tool does the essentially the same thing. Start your little indention and slowly work your way out like that. You can also play with adding ridges outside of the valley. So the valley that's been made by this meteor hitting, you can use a tool to go in and put a little ridge around the outside. It's going to look rough at first, like that, it's not a great texture, but take your finger and smooth it out and that way the little pockmark on the moon has like a ridge going into it. And if you look at our moon, you'll see that a lot of those indentions have that around them. And it kind of makes them more noticeable. They're not just indentions. There's a lot of texture there. So you can see I added one to that littler pockmark. Play around with it. You don't have to add the ridges or maybe you just add partial ridges like that. Play around with what you want the surface of your planet to look like. Maybe you would rather, instead of little pock marks, maybe you want to do like mountain lines. Take a look at what other planets in our solar system or other bodies in space that have been photographed, what do their surfaces look like? Get a little inspiration from that. Um, but whatever you do for your um, texturing, give it a variety. Don't make all of your stripes or your holes the same size. Make some deeper, make some longer. So I'm doing these pockmarks in a variety of different sizes and you can go in and just add some little ones as well. Maybe this whole corner is one big pockmark. It's like a large valley on this planet. Maybe that's why it's extra dark is it has standing water. Maybe it's an ocean. Who knows? It's whatever you want to do. Play around with it. I hope that everybody's looks different. And I hope that I get to see some of them when they're done. You can always tag me or share it to the library's Facebook page. And I'll definitely be scoping those out. So I'm just adding a bunch in. If you got a toothbrush, if you found a toothbrush around your house, and you want to see what that texture looks like, see if you can see it in the camera there. It's subtle, but it's really interesting. And you can actually, I'm gonna think I'm gonna do it all over and then smooth it out in some places. And I'm gonna go in on some of these deep valleys, smooth them out a little bit. Maybe you wanna go back in with that little 
tool that you have found and rough up the texture even a little bit more. Just play with it. And if you're like really loving your planet and you're afraid to mess it up by adding texture, use a little bit of extra clay. I had clay that I'm not incorporating into this. If you want to play around with texture and see what it's going to look like before you put it in your work, do that. I love practicing on little extra bits of clay just to kind of see what something's going to look like. I think I want to go in and accentuate a couple of these ridges here, just using my tool to press down around it. I think that really makes it look the most interesting. So we like the texture, we're good with the planet. Let's add maybe some stars. Maybe you want to put them in the background here. Maybe you want to add them over there. Whatever you intend to do with them, I just want to show you how to make them in case you'd like to. So again, make sure your clay is soft and squishy. If you conditioned other clay earlier and then you spent time working on your planet, there's a chance that it has kind of settled again and hardened a little bit. So go back, spend a little more time getting it nice and mushy. I'm gonna go ahead and warm mine up a little bit as well. Now a star shape, bring this back over here, is a little bit tricky. Please be willing to try a few times. It's taken me a long time. I've been doing clay for almost nine years now um, and it, I wouldn't have been able to do this for the first bit of time I was working with it. So be willing to try a few times practice. I'm going to show you the best way I have found to do it, which is taking a little sphere. So roll it up in a ball and then smush it into a cube. So I'm doing that by just kind of pressing with both pairs of my fingers and turning. And it doesn't have to be a perfect cube, just kind of a rough cube like that. Take it, smoosh it a little bit flat, and then look at all of the edges and try to find one that is kind of bigger. We're going to get our fifth point out of that. I'm going to, so here's, here's my biggest edge here. I'm going to pull the two corners out and I'm going to pinch them. See how our fingers naturally make this little pinched angle here? So when I do that, I left a little bit in the middle right here that I can go in and grab and pinch and pull up, giving me my top three star points. And then you can come around to these bottom edges and pinch down like that and take a minute getting it the way you want it. Maybe you've got it like this and you wish it were a little bit more, uh, a little bit pointier on the inside. So if you want to use a tool, you can kind of go in and press where your fingers are a little bit bigger than that point you want to make. Kind of go in and smoosh in the corners like that. And these ones are not glued on, but you see how well stuck they are. So if you're working with tin, and you've already colored your background. I'm not coloring the background on this one. I'm okay with that. Um, but if you want to have a sky back there, go ahead and either paint and let it dry or use your Sharpie. And then you're going to come on and just stick your star down. If you want to get rid of the most of the fingerprints, just kind of rub a little bit and that should smooth them out. Make sure you like it. I'm going to show you a couple more here because it is going to take practice. I'm not positive that that was very well framed in my camera here, so I'll make sure this one's nice and close for you. So we're gonna take a spear, press it into a cube. Now, you can see how much pigment has built up on my finger. That actually means that clay has built up on my finger. So if you're ever working with polymer clay and you're like, Oh, it's so sticky and it's just sticking to me and you're frustrated by it, go clean your fingers. That's going to help a lot. Um, I can kind of work through it with my level of experience here. So we've got our little cube. We're going to take, smoosh it a little bit flat and find the largest size, largest side. So for me, that's pretty clearly this one. When you compare them here, this side is the biggest. So I'm going to take my two corners 
of the biggest side, pull them apart and pinch them. And then I'm going to hold it back this way again and go in with your pincher fingers and pinch out that topmost point to your star like that. And then come around the side, get the two bottom ones and then spend a second getting it just the way you like it. I'd be willing to bet that it didn't work for you the first time. That's okay. Try a couple more times. Um, if you decide that making the little star shapes is too much for you, maybe you think maybe some more practice would get you there eventually. You could also, instead of using actual star shapes, you could just take a little ball, smoosh it down like a sphere. That could be like a really distant star. So if the star shapes are too much for you, please don't let that turn you off of this project entirely. Just kind of see what you can work with. Maybe you want to put another planet over there. Whatever you want to do, just know that when this closes, the little border on the bottom goes up inside of the lid. That's how it closes. So if you want to put another planet in there, don't put it right up against this edge or it won't close. And don't make it super thick because it will run into this one down here. But the way these stars are, it closes and it's totally fine. So if you want to do something different on the inside lid, you're more than welcome to, but just keep in mind how it closes uh, so that you can be sure that it can. When you're done, you can add to the top of your planet. So as long as both of your clays are conditioned. So if you've been doing this in real time with me, your planet is still pretty soft and squishy. And the clay that you're gonna make your details with is also soft and squishy. If you stick those together, like I set this little alien on, it's gonna cook just fine. See, it's not gonna come off of there. But say you made this planet yesterday and you're coming back to put an alien on today, it's not gonna stick super well. If that is the case, you can go in, you can use your fingernail, whatever, scratch up the surface that you're going to stick it on. See how I scratched like that? And then when you go to stick on that clay, scratch up its surface as well, stick them together, and that's going to help them adhere. I think I'm going to use my darker color. I'm going to pop this off of here. I think I'm gonna make a little tent. Maybe there's an alien out there camping. Maybe this isn't even a very habited world. It's just where some little aliens go to camp. So I'm gonna use my pincher fingers, that little angle in there, to pinch out a triangle. And again, this clay's nice and warm. I'm gonna come and smoosh it on like that. I know it's gonna stick. Sometimes you, if you're not sure, if you're like, ooh, Maybe it's going to pop off of there once it's baked. If you can go like this, kind of roughly like go to push it off and it stays on, then you're golden. You're going to be just fine. So you can always test how sturdy something is by giving it a little bit of a shove and seeing what happens. So I have a little rocket in the distance. My little camper maybe is washing it out of his tent flap. So whatever kind of clay you got, it is going to have baking instructions on it. You can see on the FEMO, it's gonna tell us to set our ovens to 230 degrees and to bake it for 30 minutes based on how thick the clay is. Because our planets are pretty thick, we're gonna go ahead and want to bake it a full 30 minutes. You can set it on a cookie tray and just put this whole tin in there let it bake and then let it cool in the oven. Turn the oven off and let it sit there. Don't try to take it out and touch it until it's all the way cooled off. So maybe give it like a whole hour because this metal gets really hot. Um, if you are younger and you need a grown up to help you with the oven, please ask for their help instead of doing it yourself. After it is cooked, you can kind of test, okay, or is it gonna stay in there? Kind of try to pull them out. If it pops out of there, use some glue to glue it back in. Uh, mine is really well in there. Um, if you used a wooden box, please remember to take your clay out, put it on a cookie sheet. You can put it on a piece of foil if you want to protect the cookie sheet. Bake it 
and then glue it into the box. Don't put the cardboard box in the oven, please. Um, if you're using air dry clay, don't cook it. It'll melt and be terrible and smelly. Uh, air dry clay means just that it dries in the air. Just let it sit out for about a day, maybe a day and a half, and it will harden. Uh, same with paper clay. That might actually take a little bit longer depending on how thick your planet is. So just read the packages, follow the directions. Every clay is a little bit different. Even different polymer clay brands cook at different temperatures. So just be aware of what you are working with. So here are our little tiny terraformed planets. Um, I love how they turned out. I think it's a fun, easy project and it's a great introduction to polymer clay. If you fall in love with it, keep going. Keep looking for weird tools around your house that you can add texture. Keep experimenting with mixing your colors. Maybe you can, if you want to do another planet, maybe instead of ombreing it, you can swirl the colors together and get like, make it look like there's little hurricanes happening on your planet. There's a ton to play with. I hope that you enjoyed this class. I hope that you enjoyed working with clay and I can't wait to see you next time. Thank you so much.